In this question, we need to find out which one is a vector quantity. Remember that a vector quantity is a quantity that needs to be described by uh, providing the magnitude, which is the value, of course, the units and the direction. So vector quantity, vector quantity is in each direction. Um, from the options that we have there, work done, it's, it's energy, so it's not a vector quantity, it's a scalar quantity, it doesn't need any direction. Time, again, doesn't have any direction, there's no point of saying five seconds to the left or five seconds to the right. Then temperature, again, today is 35 degrees, we don't say 35 degrees Celsius in the left and the right. So what is, um, what is a vector is displacement. And as a reminder, what is the difference between displacement and distance? Uh, distance is a scalar quantity, vector is, uh, sorry, displacement is a vector. So what is displacement and what is distance? If I start from point A and I walk to point B and then walk back to point C, what is the distance I have walked? So starting from zero, it will be 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, and then another 10, 50, another 10, 60. So in total, I have walked 60 meters. It doesn't matter if I have walked to the left or to the right or up or down. So the distance I have covered is 60 meters. Now the displacement is given, displacement is given by the final position minus the starting position. So that will be 20 minus 0, which is therefore 20. So it will make sense if I say plus 20, indicating that I have moved from A to C with this direction. So remember that vectors, they are usually um, drawn as arrows. So that will be the displacement. Then question two. Which of the following is equivalent to one kilowatt hour? Now, if you look at this unit, watt refers to power, hour refers to time. So what is given by power times time? This is, of course, the energy. Therefore, one kilowatt hour is a unit for measuring energy. And I'm providing here kind of a definition that a kilowatt hour equals to the amount of energy you would use by keeping a one kilowatt appliance running for one hour. Therefore, if it's one kilowatt hour, that means the power is 1000 watts time one hour. But in this formula, the time always has to be given in seconds. So I will convert the hour into seconds by multiplying 60 to convert it to minutes and another 60 to convert it to uh, seconds. Therefore, the energy here will be 1, 2, 3 joules. It will be 3,600,000 joules. And which one is the right one? Definitely not this one because these are given in watts. And from these options, you can see that my answer is C. If I write that in standard form, it will give me C as the answer. Question three, Stokes law. Um, now for Stokes law, which is the force, the, the drag force, the frictional force on an object moving through a fluid. So Stokes law is something we usually see when we have to deal with viscosity questions. Um, in order for the Stokes law to apply, there's a few conditions. So I'm summarizing the conditions in that box. So you can see that it applies for small spherical objects, when the objects are moving at low speed, when the flow um, is maintained to be laminar flow, and when the viscosity of the fluid is constant, that means it is not affected by the temperature, because we know that viscosity changes, changes with temperature. So from these options, uh, if you read the options, you will see that small sphere, as we said, and moving slowly. So D is the right answer for question three. Then moving on, this question is about the efficiency of moving up a box up a, along a ramp. And a reminder about the efficiency, which is the useful energy output over the useful energy input. 
Okay, so here we have to identify what is the output of that action. And the output is lifting the, the box from this position, which starts actually here, to that position over there. So I'm just going to draw it on that side. So this is the output. The reason I'm using the ramp is to manage to carry the box from the base to the top of the ramp. Okay, so that, that will be the output. And in order to get that output, what is the input? The input is that force that I apply, and I'm applying this force over a 10 meter distance. Now, back to the useful um, output. What work do I have to provide to take the box from the base to the top? I need to apply a force which is equal and opposite to its weight times the distance. Therefore, the useful uh, energy output it will be a force equal to the weight on the opposite direction, of course, times the distance that I'm moving it up. Therefore, it will be 200 times 4. And the useful energy, as I said before, is the energy that is applied on the box moving it along a 10 meter ramp. So that will be 90 times 10. So therefore we can identify that this is option C. Now regarding, regarding this, uh, this question, um, in, a, in a previous video I have said that the work done taking the box from there to here, it's equal to the work that is needed to take the box from there all the way here, assuming that the, the plane, this ramp, is frictionless. So if there's no friction, the same amount of work that I'm moving it up along the ramp will be the same as lifting it directly upwards, right? The reason in that case the the work the input is more than the output is because it's friction so some of this work is used uh, by friction and next one question five so according to newton's third law when two objects interact they exert forces on each other so uh, once again i'm providing some additional information about the pair of forces so this is uh, what describes the two forces. They're equal in magnitude, they're opposite in direction, they're acting on different objects, they're uh, acting at the same time, and they're of the same kind, meaning that same type. That means if one force is a conduct force, its pair has to be a conduct force as well. If it's a non-conduct force, like weight, for example, the other one should be a non-conduct force as well. So, if you look at this table and then you look at the options, uh, you can see that the right answer, I mean, the wrong answer in that case, because we're looking at the one which is not correct, is that the forces are acting on the same direction. 